Today we answer the age-old question, a question that Socrates and Aristotle could not answer. <laughs> what is this? What is a key filter? And what is a key listen? And why is it everywhere? If you haven't noticed, now you're going to see it everywhere. Let's switch compressors. FET compressor, bam. Key listen, key filter. And it's off, okay? What about Brit compressor? Yep, it's there too. What about just like the regular standard compressor? Oh, look, there it is as well. It's everywhere. There's the key filter over here and the key list. Okay, so they're a little farther away this time, but it's everywhere. What is it? And is it something you should know about and something that you could potentially use in your mixes? The answer is, yeah, maybe occasionally a little bit, but let's talk about what it is. So now you at least know. And then when you encounter a situation where you think, boy, I sure wish I could do blank, you'll have a tool to be able to do blank. All right. So this is... Calling it a key filter, I don't know the origin of that phrase. Someone probably out there could give you a nice long like story about the origins of the word key. I don't care. It's basically, the way I think about it, is an internal sidechain filter. Now, that probably didn't make it any more clear, did it? So let's talk about it. The, how does a, Let's talk first about how does a compressor work, because we're talking about this in, in context of a compressor. A compressor works by listening to the audio, and then it's listening to listening for peaks, and when certain peaks cross the threshold, then it kicks in and does its thing and compresses them down, okay? So here's uh, compression on just on my overall drum mix of a song. Neat. So what is this? Well, first, let's think about it this way. The compressor is listening to the entire sound, meaning all frequencies from 20 hertz up to 20K. It's listening to all of them, and it's responding to any of those frequencies that crosses the threshold. Okay? That's just the way it works. It listens for volume. What a key filter allows us to do is to filter what the compressor is listening to. So a good example of this, if you're familiar with side chaining in general. So side, let's take a tangent into electronic music for a second. Gregory, you're welcome. If I've got a kick drum that's going goosh, 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 and I've got synths that are going, I could use a compressor on the synths. So the compressor is on the synth track, but the compressor, instead of listening to the synth, it's listening to the kick drum. And so then the synth, instead of going, it goes, it's responding to the kick drum. The kick drum is triggering the compressor on the synth. So the, the normal way we use compressors, we put it on a track, it listens to the track, and it compresses the track. That all makes sense to us. Side chaining means the compressor is listening to something else while compressing this track. That's super interesting. So what does that have to do with our situation here? In this instance, this compressor is still going to listen to the drums. That part hasn't changed, but it's going to listen to something other than the entire frequency spectrum. So the key listen button is important here. This allows us to listen to what the compressor is listening to and make changes with the key filter. Let's take a listen. If I click listen key right now with this filter all the way off, it should, I don't think it's going to change anything. No, we're hearing everything. Now, what happens when I move this key filter while we're listening here using the key listen button? And by the way, all the way down turns that off. It doesn't say it here, but you could hear it click off. So the very all the way down is in the off mode. What did you hear? It's it's the word filter can be a little bit misleading because it could mean high pass filter, could mean low pass filter, could mean band filter where it's filtering a certain group of frequencies. That's more what this is doing. It's essentially letting us hear just a certain narrow group of frequencies. So when it was down here, we were only hearing the low frequencies. And then up here, we were hearing higher mid-range frequencies. And at the top, we were hearing like cymbals. So what could we use this for? 
This could allow us to trigger compression across the entire drum kit based on a set smaller amount of frequencies. Easiest example, we could have it only compressed with the kick drum or only compressed with the snare drum. That's interesting. So let's listen right now. With that filter off, let's watch when the compressor kicks in. It's probably on kick and snare. So let's just say, for argument's sake, we really just want that compression on the kick. We don't really want the snare to trigger that compression for whatever reason. So we could engage this key filter. We could listen to hone in on just the kick drum frequencies. Got to go pretty low with it to just get the kick drum. But now, my guess is this is going to trigger just by the kick, but not the snare. Interesting. We could do it the flip way. We could just trigger it on the snare and not the kick. Okay. See what that sounds like. Maybe go down a little bit with that. Okay. It's not triggering as much because the snare's not quite as loud. We might adjust the threshold a little bit, but it should only hit with the snare drum now. Interesting. So what are the uses? You might think, okay, Joe, I guess that's interesting. Why would that be useful? Um... A very specific use case that I've done before is if I've got, I've got, let's say, a drum mix and I can't control the individual components. Someone sent me a drum mix or it was recorded with just, just overheads or they just sent me a board mix or something. This gives me some control over what the compressor responds to. Maybe compression over the entire thing doesn't make sense, but I really want to tighten up what's happening with the kick drum when the kick drum hits. That's where this could come in. Or let's say the kick drum's great, but when the snare drum hits, it's just too loud in the mix, and I don't, I don't have any other option to get to the snare drum track individually. I have to turn it down here. We could use key listen in that way. So let's do that here. Let's go key listen on snare frequencies. Let's make it a little more aggressive. And let's bring the threshold way down. Now it should mostly respond to just the snare. It's hard to keep the kick out of it because the kick has so much frequencies, but it is responding more to the snare than it was before. That's kind of interesting. A more common thing would be it's extreme low frequencies and extreme high frequencies. We could say, I want you to respond to the kick drum, or I want you to respond to like cymbals. So you could have it be really high, and it's only responding to like the really high frequencies. The, the most common example though is I want just the low frequencies to trigger this, or I, or I don't want the low frequencies to trigger this. I want it to be more mid-rangey stuff. I want something in the snare range to trigger this compressor. I don't want that low end stuff that's there to trigger. I want it to kind of ignore it. So we're telling the compressor only focus on these frequencies to the exclusion of others. Now, you may hear that and say, all right, I cannot think of a single use for this. Just file it away, and your brain will likely present it to you when you encounter a situation where you're thinking, man, I really want to compress this, but the low frequency is causing the compressor to kick in too much, but I need some compression, but I don't need that much. What do I do? What do I do? This is it. Think of a bass guitar. It has this big, thick low end, but you want to compress it a little bit, but only when it plays these higher notes you could use something like this. You could use multiband compression. As with most things, there are lots of ways to solve this problem. But this key filter could be your answer. Have it just listen to more mid-range frequencies than those big, thick, energy-producing low frequencies, and then it'll only compress when those mids get loud. You could also do this with dynamic EQ, multiband compression. There are lots of ways to... I'm not going to say skin a cat. I did. I said it anyway. Lots of ways to do this, but that's what the key filter is for. And in a pinch, it can be a really helpful tool. I've specifically used this the most on, on as a mix bus compressor, 
where there's a big low end and I want that big low end to be mostly left alone. But when other things happen in the mid range, I want the compressor to kind of tame those a little bit. But the steadiness of the kick drum never wavers. This is a good example of when I've used this. Only use it on occasion, but it's nice to have that in your back pocket for a future mix. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you.